Please be there on time. And if anybody is here hoping to see the W Bowen wireless LAN roaming based on deep security session, that session has been moved and is now session 8D3. So it's not on at the same time, but anybody who wants to see that, it will not be in this session. We're here to see some recent results that have come out of the community, and I think we'll move straight on. Uh, we will begin with a session on testing Atrium with demanding applications from Michal Przbilski, who I was going to call Michal Smith, because I felt it was easier. Michal, please. Um, it does work. Thank you for the invitation, Mr. Przybylski. That's easier for me to call you this way <laughs> as well. <laughs> so uh, as soon as we get the uh, projector working, then I start. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about the uh, Atom project a little bit and, and how we test that with uh, advanced uh, applications. Uh, my name is Michal Przybylski. I'm coming from uh, Poznan Supercomputing and Networking Center in Poland. Uh, my co-authors are listed here. Um, Atom is an IST project. Uh, I'll try to. Yeah, this is an IST project uh, from Key Action 4, actually in Action Line 7.1.2. In research networks, and it's talking about test beds for uh, advanced networking and application experiments. Uh, there are a few participants in that project. Uh, we have one vendor, which is Alcatel. Uh, we have universities, which is FUNTP and uh, University Leash. Last time we got University of Ghent. Uh, and we have Poznan Supercomputing Networking Center and Telefonica in Spain. Uh, the router, uh, the, the, the router testbed is built on Alcatel routers. Uh, we use currently 7770 RCP router, which is a core router with uh, the features as listed. So it has uh, uh, multiple switching fabrics, route servers, management servers, all duplicated for high, high availability routing. Uh, software is based on Solaris. So, uh, uh, this is this well-known system. Uh, data is stored in databases. I think uh, Oracle is used, and uh, it has lots of features necessary for uh, core platform uh, for core networks, which make it a uh, nice nice platform for these networks. The testbed is comprising of uh, five routers currently. Uh, I try to use that. Can you see the laser? Uh, so. Um, uh, Three of the routers are located in France and, and Belgium, and the Alcatel headquarters for, for this project are. And uh, they, they connect in the triangle with 2.5 gig links, POS. And then this testbed is connected via Jant network with CCC connection. This is something you could see yesterday on the, on the Juniper session or, or, or on Jant session. This is CCC, so it's like layer two connection uh, between those uh, Routers located in Spain and Poznan. This connection is 622 MEX. Uh, not this one, that one. In Telefonica, they have a quite, quite large uh, video conferencing facilities connected. In uh, France Telecom and universities in Belgium, they have a uh, few smart bits for traffic generation, a few PCs for uh, proprietary software. And in PSNC, we have connected uh, many supercomputers or high performance computing machines and also some Linux boxes in order to test the Mantic applications. Mm -hmm. 
what was the general approach? What we wanted to test, what we assumed. First of all, uh, we, ex we expected every partner to give, uh, to provide PC. Uh, we have provided necessary servers, high performance computing, storage systems, etc. Uh, the connection was made by Jant uh, with the CCC. Uh, we were looking at different, different uh, modes, uh, different network parameters, and uh, especially traffic uh, engineering and QoS modifications. And we did not, we did not say that, that we need really bandwidth consuming applications. We just wanted to test how does normal grid applications perform in distributed environment when we have long latency links, and we're not really looking at how much bandwidth we have, what's the exact delay latency. You can do that with smart bits easily or another, another hardware. But the problem is how the real application perform. So that's why we had the subjective native QS metrics out. What we looked at, what we needed to understood. Uh, technology issues, we needed to see how routers and network influence the applications. Uh, we wanted to understand the grid applications better. We already do a lot in, in grid area, but, but we need to, to see how they perform the long, uh, long links, big test bed. And uh, we wanted to tune them to use this network optimally. And uh, we helped Jan to understand how to provision the CCC connections that you probably heard about uh, for European projects or for other proposals. So the manic applications, we have already tested grid FTP, which is commonly used by grid people. We know exactly what the parameters are. We know that uh, the, the, quality, the, the quantity and the size of the, of the files transferred is important. We know what we can expect from a single machine, what bandwidth. And we don't know that in relation to, with relation to other applications as uh, games and video. I will talk later about these applications. So far, we have done experiments on empty network and on congested network. What is grid FTP? Grid FTP is FTP uh, file transfer application, which is based on Globus. GABA, you've probably seen in many, in many presentations already. Uh, people in grids are using these uh, middleware services, which are based on Globus. And uh, there are different modes. For example, stream mode is just a raw da data stream, and one control stream, and the data goes like, uh, like uh, continuously. If it breaks, then we have a problem. You have block mode. You can divide file into blocks, send blocks, and then you just care for single blocks. And other, like power data, data transfer, stripe data, data transfer, which is uh, the last one, is something like you can, you can see in the um, file share utilities. Casa, vShare, this is something similar. Money servers, one user, multiple streams. But this is also used in grids. And uh, we have uh, used manual control of TCP buffer size. So for, that, for those experiments, uh, we're looking at the total experiment time. We're looking at the uh, total data transmission time, uh, transition bandwidth received, overall general time, and of course, whether the application is usable or not. Because in some cases, we might find that the application is not usable when the network is too long, delay is too high. Another application is games. I will not go in deep into details here. Uh, just generally, it's, a, it's a, a distributed environment for wave functions computations. That's for physicists. And uh, it, uh, we haven't tested that yet. So this is just, just to show you uh, another example. Also multimedia streaming. That's the uh, um, next application after that. We have a proprietary system developed completely in PSNC. Uh, with uh, live and on-demand content, and we're going to send it to the network to see how it behaves. Uh, maybe in this, this scenario, we have a little bit more stringent quality requirements, uh, I mean, in the quantitative ma manner. Okay, first of all, we have tested uh, what are the basic parameters of the network. We could see that this is PSNC on the, on the uh, right side, uh, we have, uh, for this test, we have used two, two Dell computers, usually work in the cluster, and we had computers on the other side. Uh, they were in France Telecom, in, and University, and in Alcatel. And you could see that they, they, on the left side, they're close to each other. 
Uh, the delay is three milliseconds, two or two to five, one, one and a half. And delay between Poznan and France Telecom is going through all the Europe. It's about 33, 36, 35 milliseconds one way. So one way. But we could see that on the internet, empty network, on those links who are like, I would call them native links because there's no uh, layer two tunnels or, or CC connections, uh, the jitter is very low. And jitter is a little bit higher but still negligible on the CCC connection provided by Jant. That proves that the uh, IP premium service, which is also used for that CCC connection, is, is working properly. Also, also MPLS traffic engineering is used there. So, so we can see this, this already confirms that the, the CCC tunnel is the right solution for, for uh, providing bandwidth for projects. Uh, yeah, I was wrong side. Uh, we have also tested how uh, UDP and TCP transfers perform. We found out that there's no problem with, uh, with the left side of the picture, so having all uh, Western countries, which are close together. I mean, they are connected with the native, uh, like, like uh, direct links, uh, 100 megs, and, and this is one gig. And in TCP and UDP, they have quite nice values. You could see 90. For example, 100 link, you could see 90, uh, 90 megabits per second for UDP, 60 for TCP. On one gig link already, from, between France Telecom and Alcatel, you could see 650 on UDP and only 100 on TCP, which is already how the network affects that traffic. And even worse is between Poznan and the rest of the world, in that room, of course, when we could have, for UDP, 400, 500, depends on the link, and for TCP only 9, 7 megabits. This is not usable at all. We have a long pa a fat pipe, and we cannot use the application. So in grid FTP, we had to uh, implement this parallel transmission because we tried different modes. We found out that parallel transmission is good. And we found out this is, OK, we're just opening the open door already. But uh, the more TCP sessions, the better results. On this picture, you could see uh, uh, different computers. Two, two on the on the on the top, the computers connected uh, almost directly at PSNC computers in Poznan, and these are other remote computers. And because these measurements were done on, by the grid people, the numbers there are not in megabits per second, but megabytes per second. They do not operate the same the same uh, metrics. So you could see that locally it works okay, remotely does not perform at all. I mean, it doesn't mean there was no traffic. There was traffic, but very low. We have increased the number of streams. And we saw that when we had four streams, already we had better performance here, and the performance on the top did not change. It was before like this. OK, the, the, the scale changes. It was about 15. Now you can see it's also like 10, 15. And then we increased again 32 data streams. And you could see that remote computers performed almost like they were near. So that's already improvement. Oh, sorry. And the problem became when we made too many parallel sessions. When you make too many parallel sessions, then too much of the computing power goes into processing these TCP requests and TCP windows and packets. And then overall, it goes down. You can see now seven, megabits per, uh, seven megabytes per second. Uh, and of course, the increase of the, uh, the, the larger number of TCP session is valid only for long latency links. On that picture, you could see a local computer uh, on the loop back uh, with the green, green line shows, uh, shows one stream and other lines show different number of streams just for the loop back. That's the best example on how, how, how the number of TCP session influence single machine. And then this is, this is the computer connected directly. Also, doesn't help. One TCP session is better than, than multiple TCP sessions. But if you got different, uh, uh, you, have, you, you have long latency links, then you can see that, that this is just for one computer with different number of streams. You can see that the, uh, the bandwidth utilization is much better. But another thing, these are the uh, examples that all people show. But in grid transmission, we might have small files, large files, mixed files. And usually, people make this old transmission record sending one big file, 10, gigabits, uh, 10 gigabytes volume 
over, over the link, and they say we have another record. But what happens if you have multiple small, small files? You can, of course, copy that to, to one big file, send it, but we have tested it. And uh, it shows that, or maybe I go to the third slide, this is the slide that, that you can usually see. There's somewhere optimum, oops, there's optimum somewhere here in the middle, when you can find that, for example, for 32 uh, streams, you get the best performance between all computers. But this is valid only for one gig, one gigabyte files. If you have small files, oops, you get smaller files, then this, this optimum goes into a different area. It's 16 now. Maybe other condition, it could be even less. Maybe you might find for some computers here, like maybe four, for the, again, 16, or maybe here, eight. So it's not a trivial task to find out which configuration is the best for your application. You always have to individually tune that. For your network, for the given link, you have to work out the rules. I just go like this. So what are the conclusions? Uh, this was the early results. It's, it's the, the, the process is not yet finished, but what we found so far, uh, the routing, packet loss, delay, and jitter, they don't make any problems for the network so far. I think I, think I, I missed one slide that I have sent a new presentation. It has not been that, uh, uploaded. Maybe. But anyway, there was another slide showing how the influence of the, uh, of the uh, congestion in the network influences the traffic. So we could see that there, when there's congestion, there's also a small uh, drop in the, in the bandwidth. If you turn on QoS, then it goes higher. Uh, conclusions were uh, that uh, there are no, no problems with CCC connections, that uh, we have to use Power TCP or any other new protocol. We did not discover which one. Maybe you can use scalable TCP or high-speed TCP. But you have to change something in the existing model to get the better results. Uh, Jan CCC service is a good service, but the problem is it's costly. If you want to simulate or emulate layer 2 connection, you need to use very expensive IP interface, which is, which is not good. And you, if you have many projects, you will ask Jan for another interfaces. They say, no, 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 you have to think different way. And perhaps we have to think different way how to organize Jan as well. And uh, one issue, test beds. The testbed was not hacked, protected. We have allowed universities to use the testbed. And one month later, we had the many computers uh, broken into and, and infected with different uh, viruses, uh, cracked by hackers. So we had to reinstall the testbed because we let these university people get in. So uh, I guess uh, this is the uh, lesson for us. Next time to install firewalls in the testbed. You cannot just do this like, like that. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? Thank you, Michal. Do we have any questions? Everybody is okay. stunned. I, maybe Mr. Przybylski, maybe you say something, ask something. I, I promise I will practice my pronunciation of Polish shortly, <laughs> probably this evening. Um, I think one of the, the things that comes out of this is the more closely we look at anything to do with networks, the stranger the performance and the behavior seems to be. And we were expecting to see different behavior of TCP with multiple streams, but I'm not sure we were expecting to see differences with file sizes so much as you have shown. Maybe, maybe I, should, I should elaborate a little bit more. Just, just one sec, I try to go back to the slides that describes TCP uh, sessions. In this, in this mode, you can see here, uh, stream mode, I told you that this is just raw data. Mm. So one control stream and raw data. Not many control operations. When you go to extended block mode, it's almost the same, but then you have transmission blocks. You send one block, block is okay, you send another one. Then you have parallel that data transfer. Then you have one control, which is also good. You have stripe that data transfer, for example. Then you have n times control. It means n times control operation. And you have smaller, smaller files, then the control operation comes more often. Right. So, so that's it. And, and if you can, uh, say, 
bypass the delay boundaries by using parallel TCP sessions to have a better throughput, then it's not that easy to to reduce the influence of the of the band on the delay on the control messages. I think we're going to have more results when we try this game system, which is in fact distributed computation, but most of the work is done on the servers, and very often there are control messages, short, small control messages just carrying some useful data. And we might, we might get into trouble with synchronization of computation, and also, also with uh, uh, the, the overhead for the transmission of, of, control, of control data. So this is very important. I think this is also important to, to see that the networking people are quite uh, separated from the grid people. We try to bring them together so uh, they can experience networks better and we can experience grids. Yeah. And this is the problem, I think, in many places. I see on TFNGN, we don't have uh, many grid people. Yeah. And there's requirements from network people to get more input from them. Yeah. Any questions? In which case, thank you very much. Thank you. The next session we have is Damir. I confess to having a sneak preview of the presentation and being intrigued and uh, wondering the applications that people are going to find for some of this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 